Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer for Google, Patrick Pichette. Good morning, Kansas City. Good morning to everybody else who's joining us on the web. Um, my name is Patrick Pichette. My day job is to be the Chief Financial Officer at Google. Everybody needs a day job. That's mine. And, but as part of my job, uh, I've also been one of the key sponsors of this Google Fiber project, an amazing project. Look, as part of my day job at Google, you can imagine, I have an immense privilege of living, living really on the edge of the digital economy. And not only that, but I'm side by side every day with these amazing engineers and project managers at Google that reinvent the world, that pushes the edges, that actually invents these amazing products that you benefit and live with, the magic every day. And all this magic, it's really available because of one fundamental force, the web. And it's something that's amazing because now you kind of take it for granted, the web. We all do. Yet, it's such a profound, amazing force for the good. Let me give you, if you take a step back over the last decade, how our lives have changed in small but really important ways because of the web. So let's take an example, right? A productivity, so commerce, right? E-commerce is something you take for granted now. You sit on your sofa at home and you shop. Much more convenience, right? You get better choice, you get better prices, and you don't have to fight for parking spots at the mall. That's something that you now you take for granted. You what else do you take for granted? You take for granted things such as turn-by-turn -turn directions, as an example. Right Now you have turn-by-turn -turn directions on your phone, and you can go from Kansas City to wherever your heart desires. But it was only a few years ago that you'd kind of go into your glove compartment to see crown maps, of which you had three or four, and of which none of were the right ones for the place you were going. And, and it's true for download. Think of downloading streaming videos, right? Today, you just, it happens. And yet, only a few years ago, you went to a video store, like you drove, and you got stuff, and you brought it back home. <laughs> you just don't notice it, but the web has changed your own productivity and well-being. Let's take another example, which is the democratization of information. From searching millions and billions of data bits everywhere, without leaving your home, right at your fingertips. So for example, a couple of years ago, MIT, you know, this famous engineering school in Boston, it's put all of its course loads online. You can listen and watch to every lecture of MIT today. Who is it available to? The entire world. And for how much? For free. This is a huge change. It's also true for, say, nonprofits. If you know about DonorsChoose.org, a great online organization, and it's a charity that connects directly teachers and their needs in the community and classrooms and you. And you just go on. You can scroll through your neighborhood schools or schools that are in higher needs in your area and just give them a few dollars that actually makes their projects happen. Again, a huge change for democratization. Then finally, just in thinking news, right? Not only the mainstream news, but also all the news related to social media and how that's changing. The Arab Spring of last year is a perfect example of, hey, you know, the information is available and it is fueling change and change for the good. So all of these things, again, are just a profound change from the web. But that's only productivity and, and democratization. There's probably finally, like if you think about it, one of the most important part of what the web is doing is it's a cornerstone for innovation, for economic development, and frankly, job creations, which is something that you know, we all want. Right? The basic research shows that you know, for every 10% increase in penetration of high speed, it changes GDP by 1%. And you're going to tell me 1%, Patrick. Yeah, but think in the context of the US economy. Our economy in the US is $15 trillion. So move that needle by 1%, that's $150 billion. And last time I checked the CFO, a billion dollars, right? It's a thousand million dollars. <laughs> like, like, that's a lot of money. And when you translate all that into jobs, right? It's somewhere in the vicinity of half a million to a million jobs every year. Think of the impact this has to communities like Kansas City. 
communities all around the country. So the internet is a huge positive force, no doubt about it. We recognize it, and yet, we're at a crossroad. So let me explain that crossroad to you. The power of the internet is really driven by three fundamental forces. Computing power, storage capacity, and then your access. That's really it. And it's actually worth taking a look at the last 15 years and look at how these trends have evolved and where are we today. So I've got a chart for you. And I'm going to first put computing. Everybody's heard of Moore's Law. And Moore's Law is really simple. It basically says computing power doubles every 18 months. And with that in mind, and you know, because it's an exponential curve, it just gets really big, and yet it's continued to live its promise. So what does that mean? That means that everybody here that's got a smartphone, the computing power on your phone is dramatically better than what your PC was five years ago. And that's why we made bets on mobile at Google, because you could see it coming. So that's just to give you a sense of the power of one. Then you go to storage and look at the curve. It's been absolutely astounding. Storage cost continues to plummet. You can put more and more bits into you know, smaller, smaller spaces at a cheaper price. That has continues. It's just a relentless curve. And lastly, the three pieces that come together, it's access. So speed and cost. Well, the story there, take a look. It's quite different. And yet, we notice that you know, in the first days of the internet, you go to 1990 to 2000, it was very clear it was doubling. People remember, people of my age, the younger ones won't, but 14.4 kilobits to 28 kilobits. Like, and, you heard, and, and, and you heard that, yeah, of that dial up, and you thought, wow, this is awesome, right? <laughs> and it kept on going. And then after the, broad, the, the cable modem showed up since the year 2000, very little progress on the access side. The average American today has roughly 5.8 megabits of speed and pays roughly, on a unit cost basis, the same thing as 15 years ago. But there's hope because in the last few years, the technology has evolved dramatically. And now it does enable us to actually provide huge access speeds 100 times faster. And in fact, many countries are jumping on the bandwagon. Many countries are not waiting. They're in fact jumping ahead and, and for those that actually are investing, their average speeds are upwards of 50 megabits per second compared to our six. So we at Google, we believe there's no need to wait. There's no need to be limited. There's no need for caps. There's no need for slow. Why slow? There's, in fact, everything here to have an amazing abundance of capacity. And with it, deliver that third curve, which is really lining up the storage and computing. And that's the choice that we have today. We either stay on that momentum, or do we take this new course? We think at Google, by the way, this serves us very well, because it fits perfectly with our mission. Our mission, organize the world's information, make it universally accessible, and immensely useful to all of you. That's what we're here to do. So that's our choice. And I guess you can see where the rest of the story is going for today. And by the way, we're making this story with a great partner here in Kansas City. Couldn't be happier to be anywhere else in the world. In fact, I was telling the mayor earlier today, my wife is kind of hounding me because she's saying, how come you pick Kansas City? How come you, you're the executive? You're supposed to. Kansas City has been the perfect choice. Thank you, Kansas City. And what I'd like to do now. <laughs> So instead of giving me, letting me give you the details, why don't I actually turn it over to the real leaders, the real engineers, the real executives that actually are making all of this possible, and they'll give you the details of the rest of the story. Without further ado, thank you for your time, and I'm going to turn it over to Milo Medin, who's going to give you the rest of the story. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's great to be back in Kansas City. Um, I would talk a little bit about, you know, what is Google Fiber? Well, Google Fiber starts with internet speeds up to a gigabit a second. That's a thousand megabits a second. 
engineers use different, it's still that way too, just like a, a billion is a thousand million uh, in the CFO world. And our gigabit is a sym symmetric gigabit because you can upload as fast as you can download. It's internet 100 times faster than what most Americans have today. And what does it mean to be 100 times faster? Well, if you were in a car that moved 100 times faster than another car, and both cars left at the, from Kansas City going to New York, the car going faster would be there in New York before the other car left Missouri. <laughs> we drive crazy in California, but that's why we've got self-driving uh, cars to fix that problem. <laughs> So to put it in context, as Patrick mentioned, when we look at American, the average American household, they're experiencing speeds of about 5.8 megabits down and a lot slower at about 1.2 megabits up. But this is incredibly slow relative to the rest of the developed world, especially the size of our economy. And even though the internet was invented here, other countries have sped forward and their citizens are in experiencing the web at much faster speeds than we are. Not only are our speeds lower, but Americans pay more per megabit than any other major world economy. Well, at least we're better than New Zealand. <laughs> now, you might be asking, why do I need a gig? How could I possibly use that much? Well, let's go down memory lane a little bit. How many of you here remember dial-up? How many of you here had dial-up? I remember there's people here who didn't raise their hands. That's great. <laughs> my, ki my kids, I have four of them, but none of them know dial-up. Uh, they won't understand the uh, video that we showed at the front. Um, in the early days of the consumer internet, we put up with text-based email. We waited on the squeal of dial-up modems to connect. We shared low-res graphics images around. And we had one computer that you had to share with your phone line. Remember? Get off, get off. I got to get my email. Stop talking on the phone. 16 years ago, a company I helped co found started delivering broadband over cable. Delivered with about four to five megabits of download. It was always connected. And you know what? It was 100 times faster than what existed before. 100 times faster than dial up. And you would think when we were getting started that people were, would say, this is great. Everybody will take it. But you know what? When we said it'll go 100 times faster, people said, nobody needs that much speed. In fact, we tried to do a deal with the largest ISP at the time who, uh, who, who did uh, dial-up internet access. This company went out and did marketing studies. They asked their customers, would you pay 40 bucks a month to download your email 100 times faster? And based on the results of that question and others, they came back to us and said, well, you know what? Broadband's not going to be a main mass market thing. Not going to be successful. Of course, as history has shown us, that was the wrong question. And uh, we can do better. As broadband started rolling out and pe people got it, innovation started happening. Online shopping maps, downloading software, even photo sharing. Do you remember when people actually went to the store to buy software? You remember that? It wasn't that long ago. In fact, so much information started coming to the internet that you needed, even, you needed a service to help you search through all of it. <laughs> that was a joke. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> Webmail became practical. Online video services like Netflix and YouTube that just couldn't exist before were invented and spread like wildfire. And thanks to Wi-Fi, home networking helps share access across all your devices, computers, laptops, tablets, smartphones, televisions. But you know what? As the chart Patrick showed indicated, things have stagnated. A decade and a half later, your speed hasn't changed all that much. The access network hasn't kept up with the rest of the internet. And it's great that things have gotten a little faster. But we can do better. You know what? We can do a lot better. So 
Let's show you Google Fiber in action. I'm going to invite Dov and Larry, a couple uh, product managers uh, on Fiber up, and they're going to help demo a few scenarios where to show you what it means to have a gigabit. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Milo. I'm Dove. I'm Larry. And let's go ahead and get started by running a speed test. OK, as these get going, we can see it looks like Larry's got about an average broadband connection. He's seeing five megabits down. And wow, look at that. I've got over 900 megabits down. I'm at home with my family, and Larry's at home with his. We each have multiple internet connections. What's funny about a gig, it's so fast, most speed tests out there can't even keep up with it. And look at this. Larry's getting oh, roughly about a megabit up. And wow, I'm getting over 700 megabits up. I'm sure someday someone will create a great speed test capable of measuring gigabit speeds. I'd expect to see both 1,000 megabits down and 1,000 megabits up on this kind of connection. So we're all used to doing stuff with broadband. But fiber is not about just doing stuff. It's for experiencing awesome things together. We just got into Kansas City from, our, from San Francisco, where our families had a chance to tour the city over the weekend. Our kids can't stop talking about sharing all the photos and videos. Hey, Dove, how amazing was that sunset over the Golden Gate Bridge? It was awesome. I'm excited about some of the photos and videos that I shot on my camera phone. Can't believe how good these things have become. Let's each put our videos up into the cloud so we can make a movie together. Sounds good. I'm going to open my Google Drive window, and I'm going to drag my video over to start the upload. All right, and I've just uh, dragged mine over here as well, and off it goes. <laughs> my connection is sweet, man. Look at that. This thing will be up in no time, and then we can get started. Whoa, slow down. Mine's still getting started. It's at 1%. Wow. Uh, you may need to start editing alone. Hmm. OK, uh, no worries, Larry. Your, your video will get there um, eventually. <laughs> well, uh, while we're waiting, did your kids have as much fun, on my, uh, as, much fun as mine did on that trip? Honestly, I'm so amazed watching our kids together. I barely have a handle on these photos and videos and social stuff, but they're teaching themselves things that I didn't learn until I got to college. And watching them do those amazing art projects, watching them learn and grow is so much fun. Speaking of the kids, let's see what they're up to. Our daughters are collaborating on some kind of school project together. Their teacher has provided the class with a collection of photos and videos to be used in their project. They go to their school website and start downloading the media. Wow. My daughter's Kathy's download is not going to be done for another 13 minutes. Wow. Ours is flying. Look at that. And this file is 500 megabytes. That's four gigabits. That's a lot of bits. And look at how quickly it downloaded. It's done. It's a bummer. My daughter Zoe would love to work with Kathy on this project. But Kathy's just didn't download in time. Zoe's going to have to get started on her own. My daughter has a bit of bandwidth envy. It feels like, <laughs> it feels like stuff sort of just works on the internet, but sometimes it just gets slow. And then when other people get online in the house, it just gets super, super slow. <laughs> you know, we never think twice. I feel like we can watch 100 movies, upload 1,000 photos. We can have the kids doing who knows what on their laptops and smartphones, and, and we just never skip a beat. Well, meanwhile, back to the parents. Larry, let's get our photos shared on Google+. I'm going to go ahead and grab these files over here. I've got 100 photos. And just drop them right into Google+. And off they go, up to the cloud. Wow, look at that. They just pop right up. There they go. One, two. This is awesome. Wow. Mine is still stuck uploading one of 100? <laughs> Dude, how do you get anything done with that speed? <laughs> I've got my videos and pictures in the cloud shared with all my friends. Speaking of, how's your video doing? Is it up yet? Let's go take a look. Oh, man, it's still uploading. It's at 12%. This is going to take a while longer. <laughs> yeah, that was a really short clip. That was like a three-minute video. Imagine how long it would take to upload an hour of video. I'd end up waiting all night. You know, I'm just going to go watch some TV and come back and deal with this later. With this gigabit connection, in the last few minutes, I just uploaded a high-definition video and 100 high-res photos to the cloud. At the same time, I downloaded a 500 megabyte file in less time than it'd take to grab a sip of water. Imagine what we could do together if we both had a gig. 
All that time we spend doing, waiting, buffering, downloading, those are life's moments we should be experiencing together. In this demo, we barely scratched the surface of what can be done with a gigabit. Kansas City, this is your network. I can't wait to see what you do with it. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Dove. Uh, so we just showed you some amazing ways we expect people to use uh, Google Fiber. Um, I don't know about you, but I've never met someone who said, my internet connection is too fast. <laughs> um, we want to change that. Uh, Google is delivering ac access to the internet in a way we're not rationing it. There's no monthly volume caps, no overage charges. And as fiber speeds become available in more and more places, there's going to be all kinds of great innovation in the types of apps enabled by these speeds. Just as we saw 16 years ago when broadband first started to get rolled out, and now all these kind of applications that we take for granted that didn't exist back then um, started coming out. We're all going to get to see that together. One application that Gigabit really makes a difference with is accessing content in the cloud. So our gigabit service comes with a terabyte, that's right, 1,000 gigabytes of cloud storage in Google Drive included. It's bundled with the product. And you can have all your photos, all your documents, music, home videos, all in one place on the web with the assurance that they're always available wherever you are, on whatever device you're using, and if you're on fiber, always fast. Another application which can immediately take advantage of fiber's incredibly high bandwidth is TV. And not just internet TV, but real TV with your favorite channels. Uh, the kind that you usually could only get from your cable or satellite provider. Not just in high definition, but the highest quality high definition with bandwidth to spare. Google Fiber is not just about a super fast internet, it's also about a great new TV experience as well. So today, we're introducing Google Fiber Television. And rather than just have me uh, stand up here and talk to you about it, I'm going to have Larry and Sardik come up and show you a little bit about the new TV experience that we've created that can take advantage of your gigabit fiber connection. Come on up, guys. Thanks. Hi. You may remember me playing a dad in the earlier demo. <laughs> <laughs> or, even, or even playing a doctor in our April Fool's video. Yes. But now I'm here playing myself, product manager on Google Fiber. As Milo mentioned, people love their TV. We like our computers, but we really love television. And now with gigabit speeds, we can enable people to do more and more with their TV. So today, I'm excited to show you all the new Google Fiber TV service. With me here on stage is Sartak Ray. He's going to help us out in the demo. So let's imagine a family that just signed up for the new Google Fiber TV service. Let's take a peek and see what they might be up to. Let's say the parents are at home, and they're looking for something to watch on TV. They just bring up the guide, scroll around until they find something to watch. With hundreds of fiber channels, all your favorites will be in HD. They see that their favorite show is playing on KNBC. But first, they want to go check out the news during this crazy heat wave. So they tune to the KSHB news. They click on the show, and it switches the channel, just like any TV today. Suddenly, Mom remembers that her five-year-old son is coming home from school soon, and she forgot to set up recording of his favorite TV show. So she brings up the search screen by pressing the search button on Fiber's Bluetooth remote, which comes standard with our service, as you would expect. She's looking for Sesame Street. Google Fiber TV can remember the stuff you looked for before, so let's just select the recent search. Notice there are many episodes available, including ones on Netflix. Google Fiber TV will search across all your TV sources, live channels, your DVR recordings, the on-demand library, and Netflix, if you are a Netflix subscriber. She wants the newest episodes, so she selects future airings. 
She notices that none of the future airings are set to record, so she selects Smart Record. On Google Fiber, you can record up to 500 hours of shows in full HD. And with the ability to watch and record eight shows at a time, you can now spend your time watching TV instead of managing your TV. Mom can now resume watching her show. So now the dad comes home. I'm, I'm sorry, now the son comes home, and he wants to watch TV. Like all kids these days, he prefers a mobile device. So he picks up the tablet in the living room to look for something to watch. With Google Fiber, the tablet is your new remote control. We've made the entire TV experience more interactive for everyone in the room as more and more people are watching TV with multiple screens in front of them. The Fiber TV app will be the best way to experience Google Fiber TV. It will work on tablets and smartphones for both Android and iOS, so everyone in the family can interact with the TV simultaneously. Now that the son has picked up his tablet, he brings up the search page. The five-year-old son can't spell sesame, but he knows how to say it. So using voice search, he searches for his favorite show, Sesame Street. Sesame Street. He selects Sesame Street, then selects a new episode to watch. The episode starts on the TV. Since his mom also bookmarked this show, next time he can start from the bookmark. So now imagine the older sister has come home now, and she politely asks if she can use the TV for her homework. The little brother says, OK, OK. So because his sister just kicked him off the TV, he, he takes his tablet to his room where he can continue to watch his, uh, his show on the Google Fiber TV app, right on his tablet, right where he left off. You'll be able to watch live TV and DVR recordings with the Fiber TV app on your tablet in an upcoming version. So for now, let's just imagine the kid is watching in a different room. So the older sister has a big biology project that she needs to work on. Her teacher mentioned that the University of Kansas Medical Center has a bunch of videos available that could help her with her project. But she remembers that the Google Fiber TV service includes content from KU Medical Center. So she looks in the local section in the Discover to and finds a video to watch. Google Fiber TV will feature exclusive content from many local Kansas City organizations. So you can imagine Fiber featuring content from your local school or favorite sports team. We're working with many organizations to create a content publishing platform. One of the best parts of Google Fiber is that it keeps getting better. I'd like to give you a sneak peek at some features that are coming out shortly. Imagine dad sees a post on his Google Plus stream, alerting him to a show that he, or he and his daughter might be interested in watching. He tunes to the show and he starts watching. We're working on the ability to tune automatically from your social stream. While watching the show, he can follow a live social feed. He can press the plus one button. Or he can share the show with his friends via other social apps on his tablet or phone. Using the tablet or mobile app, Google Fiber TV will integrate with all your popular social networks, making live TV more relevant than ever before. So now dad has to go to the kitchen to make dinner. Because he doesn't want to miss a beat, he uses the tablet as a remote control to send the TV show to the TV in the kitchen. The daughter is hooked on the game, so she keeps watching in the living room. Google Fiber TV supports multiple televisions, so different people can watch different shows on different TVs in different rooms in the house all at the same time. While the daughter is watching, mom wants to get ready for movie night. So she, brings up, she picks up her tablet and brings up the Discover screen. There are too, way too many movies to choose from. She's in a mood for an adventure movie, so she narrows the search. She sees that the movie Big Miracle is available on demand. So she selects the movie and gathers the family. When they're all in the room, she presses play, 
and the movie starts playing on the TV. Google Fiber TV will have tens of thousands of shows available on demand. Many of the shows will be in top quality 1080p, just like this one. And we're always adding more. It keeps getting better. So the next time you fall asleep on your sofa watching TV, when you wake up in the morning, your TV just might be a little bit better. We are constantly working on new features, adding new content, and developing new ways for your entire household to interact with video and the web. And because our TV service is built on a gigabit network, the possibilities are endless. Imagine more 3D content, video hangouts, shows from your local community, rich social experiences, and much, much more. We have a team of engineers who never stop dreaming of how to improve your experience. So just like the web, Google Fiber TV will keep getting better. Thank you. Wasn't it cool? We're really excited about this product and hope you are too. You don't have to settle for old style television anymore. <laughs> After all, with the most advanced internet in America, you should have the most advanced TV experience in America too. As I said, Google Fiber starts with a connection speed 100 times faster than today's average broadband. Instant downloads, crystal clear HD, and endless possibilities. It's not just internet, and it's not just TV. It's Google Fiber. So you might be wondering, what will Google Fiber look like in your house? Well, we've worked really hard to deploy a robust network to connect your home in Kansas City to the rest of the internet. But to ensure you can reap all the benefits offered by gigabit speeds, we've had to put a lot of work into designing new devices to help deliver that gigabit inside your house as well. So let me tell you a little bit about these devices and show you what they look like. First, we pull in a fiber optic connection directly to your home and then connect it to a fiber jack mounted on the wall. Then the network box takes the gigabit connection from the fiber jack on your wall and distributes the ultra-fast internet inside your house. It has four gigabit ethernet jacks where you can plug in computers at the highest speed. It's equipped with great Wi-Fi. And although Wi-Fi is slower than a wired connection, we built in a great Wi-Fi radio to allow you to get as much of the gigabit speed as possible when you are not wired. And stay tuned, because we're doing some really cool things with guest Wi-Fi access as well. It's got a firewall that protects your home network from outside hackers, but doesn't compromise on speed. And you can manage your network virtually, where you can control all your devices from a portal that's understandable by everyone, but still has direct access to the detailed controls if you're a power user and you really want to turn on all those features. And I know some of you here do, because I'm one of those. Uh, and to power the TV service, we've created some special devices as well. Uh, we have a storage box. It's designed as your home DVR, which any of your fiber-powered TVs connect to using the same coax cable that's in your house today. So now the DVR isn't just for one TV, it's for all of them. You can start watching a show in one room and then pick up where you left off in another. It comes with two terabytes of storage, more than 500 hours of HD recordings. And you can watch or record up to eight TV shows at once. So you never have to worry about messing up a recording if you're watching something else on TV. And you can load onto it your personal media, like home movies, music, and photos, and access them on all your TVs. And at every TV, you have a TV box. This is your new set-top box. But now it's sleek enough and it's small enough. It's about this big that you can basically connect it anywhere, even out of sight behind your flat panel TV mount on a wall. Every TV box is HD ready, and there are no extra monthly fees to watch high definition. And with the TV box, you get access to hundreds of high def channels and tens of thousands of movies and TV shows on demand. It's got fully integrated online video, starting with Netflix and with YouTube, of course. And it's also got a Wi-Fi access point built into it. 
So you'll also get better Wi-Fi coverage throughout your home. Anywhere there's a TV, you're not going to have any more dead spots, even in the basement. We've designed a TV box to extend your internet access throughout your home by turning every TV into a Wi-Fi router. And it's got an Ethernet port on the back, so if you've got a game console, you can just plug it right in. It's Bluetooth enabled, so you can pair your favorite digital accessories with your television, like stereo Bluetooth headphones, so you can watch TV and not disturb others while they might be sleeping. And it's fully compatible with all major types of TV connections. So it'll work with your TV today and new TVs coming out in the future. And then finally, meet your new remote control, the Nexus 7 tablet. In addition to being an awesome tablet computer, it comes outfitted with a Google Fiber TV app, where you can search and browse for your next show without interrupting the current one on the, t on the screen. You can watch TV anywhere in your house. You can sh share social content while you watch. And everybody can have a remote. You can share the TV experience across your household, even if you aren't in front of the TV. Because we think that this is the best way to experience and control your TV, we're including a Nexus 7 as part of your TV package at no extra charge. That's right. It's really cool. We want things to get better all the time. And we think a tablet is a great vehicle for being able to do that. With this whole ecosystem of devices in your home, you'll get the most out of your gigabit service all the time. And again, maybe the biggest difference from what you might be used to is that just like the web, Google Fiber gets better all the time. Your devices are going to be updated automatically through the network with new features being added. And we're working on new network technologies behind the scenes to make sure speeds that reach your home are as fast as they can be and will get even faster over time. Because you know what? We don't actually believe a gigabit is the end. <laughs> I hope you, th you like what we built. We're very excited about this product. You must be wondering how you can get this fiber experience at your house. So I'm going to turn it over to Kevin Lowe, our general manager, to tell you how. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kevin Lowe. I'm the GM of Google Access. And it is absolutely my pleasure to tell you how you can get Google Fiber to your home. For the past year, we've been installing a lot of equipment and pulling a lot of fiber throughout Kansas City. It's not a simple process. It takes a lot of time. In order to deliver a gig of internet connectivity to your home, we need to physically pull a, a fiber from the street, whether aerially or underground, to your home. The cost of this to the consumer will be $300. And that includes a date with a Google Fiber team member who'll come into your home, install the devices, and get you set up properly. Now, installing fiber may be viewed of as expensive. But above and beyond the huge value associated with a faster internet connection, a direct fiber optic connection to your home adds value to the, price of, to the price of your home. Think of it as like remodeling your kitchen or installing energy efficient windows. In fact, several studies have shown that a direct fiber optic connection to your home will improve the value of your home by between two to $5,000. And certainly, this makes even more sense if you rent out your home or apartment. Now, let me talk a little bit about the packages. When we designed these products, we knew that TV would appeal to a lot of people. We also knew there'd be people out there who just want a super fast internet connection. So we've crafted two packages to try to address both sets of users. The first package is the gigabit and TV product. It includes the construction of a fiber, uh, fiber to your home, all the great devices that Milo just walked you through that help you take advantage of both gigabit connectivity as well as super crystal clear HD, and it includes a terabyte of cloud storage on Google Drive. 
in terms of TV channels, you know, life's pretty complicated. So to keep TV simple, we decided we're going to lump all the channels, all your favorite channels, just into one bundle. This includes all the major broadcast networks, hundreds of fiber channels, tens of thousands of hours of shows on demand, all of them in crystal clear HD. We also have premium movie channels that you can, uh, that you can get for an additional monthly fee. And we're constantly adding new channels and even more on-demand content every day. And don't forget your new remote control, the Nexus 7 tablet, which is also the starting point for a lot of the great user experiences you just saw demonstrated here. The gig and TV package will cost $120 a month. And, and for customers we're installing now, with a two-year contract, we're waiving the construction fee. The second package is our gigabit internet package. This includes a fiber construction to your home, one network box, and again, because we're bringing the cloud into your home, we've included one terabyte of cloud storage on Google Drive. Our gigabit package costs $70 a month. And here, too, for customers we're installing now with a one-year contract, we're waiving the construction fee. And finally, we believe the internet is best when everyone is connected together. And this includes 25% of Kansas Cityans who don't have broadband at home, or 17% of Kansas Cityans that don't use the internet very much at all. So we wanted to make sure that if for whatever reason you're not quite ready today to commit to a gig, that as we construct the network in your neighborhood, you, for a one-time opportunity only, have, you have a chance to future-proof your home and then upgrade to a gig whenever you're ready. So we've designed a third package, which offers today's average broadband speeds of five megabits a second down and one megabit a second up for free. Free for at least seven years to anyone who chooses to connect their home and pay the $300 construction fee either up front or $25 a month for the first year. So there you have it. Here are our three packages. Hopefully you're excited about at least one of them. Um, before we move on, I wanted, to, I wanted to, quickly, uh, to, to quickly speak with the, the businesses here in the room today. Um, we believe that when you have a critical mass of users who are connected with a gigabit of connectivity, it creates great opportunities for businesses as well. Now, today, we're here to talk about residential users. But for businesses in the areas that we build, stay tuned. We've got some great packages for you, and we'll be making those announcements soon. So hopefully, hopefully all of you are itching to sign up for Fiverr. Um, so let me tell you how. Fiverr is different, and getting it is a little bit different too. Recall how we came to Kansas City in the first place. When we decided we wanted to build a gigabit network, we went out to the country and asked cities everywhere, who's interested in working with us to deploy this network. In Kansas City, you convinced us that you wanted fiber most. So today, as we launch fiber, we're continuing that same approach. Instead of us deciding where we're going to finish out construction and when we're going to start installing users, we figured, let's ask Kansas Cityans and let you decide. 
we're going to deploy our network wherever there's enough interest, and we're going to build sooner in areas where there's most interest. Again, we believe that Google Fiber is best when you have a critical mass of users connected with a gig. And how do you show your interest? Today, we're kicking off a six-week rally. You can think of it as somewhere between a pep rally and an, a car race. Um, the rally will be the process by which Kansas Cityans tell us when and where to start. But please, don't try any crazy stunts. <laughs> the process of indicating your interest and in subscribing to Google Fiber is a lot easier than you think. The first thing you need to do is go to our website at google.com slash fiber. And there, you can raise your hand and tell us you're interested by pre-registering for a $10 fee. And that's it. But you're not quite done yet. If you really want this, you can help bring fiber to your area by rallying your neighbors. First, to meet your area's goal, and then to get it sooner. So to make this a little bit more tangible, we've worked very closely with the community to understand your existing neighborhood boundaries. And then we've actually broken them apart into smaller units that we're calling fiber hoods. <laughs> Each fiber hood consists of you and around 800 of your neighbors. In this first rally, it's going to cover Kansas City, Kansas and central Kansas City, Missouri. Um, which we're really excited about, that we were able to bring Kansas City, Missouri into this first rally. Um, we're a little bit ahead of schedule where we expected to be um, when we last talked last year. You can find out which fiber hood you belong to by going to the website and entering your address. Now, each fiber hood has a minimum goal, meaning a minimum number of users who need to pre-register. For the most part, this is going to be between 40 and 80 of your neighbors. And if your fiber hood meets your minimum goal, you will get fiber. And as we build out your fiber hood and we turn on your service, we will also be connecting schools, libraries, community centers, public safety buildings, <laughs> government buildings, a total of 200 in this first rally, of over 200 in this first rally, and provide them free gigabit internet connectivity. So that covers where. Let's talk about when. The rally will end on September 9th. All the fiber hoods who qualified will know exactly where they stand and when they can expect to receive service. At that point in time, you can then finalize your choice of package. And then when the timing comes, or when the time comes, you can schedule a convenient time uh, to get your service installed. And once again, the fiber hoods that are at the top of the leaderboard, meaning those that have demonstrated the highest level of interest, will get it first. All of this information in this process during the rally will be up on our website. Um, you know exactly where you stand and how many more households you need to go rally. So remember, when you participate in the rally, not only are you bringing fiber to your home, you're bringing fiber to Kansas Cityans that you care about. So let's do this for Kansas City. And to help you learn more about fiber so you can teach your neighbors, we'll be having a number of events over the next six weeks um, we also know that it's really hard sometimes to imagine what fiber is. So we've created this fiber space for people to come and learn more about Google Fiber and to experience it firsthand. The fiber space will be open to the public this coming Saturday, July 28th, by reservation only. So check our website for exact details and also a list of local events that will be going on over the next couple of weeks. When you walk into the fiber space, you'll see that we've collaborated with KU Medical Center, Sporting KC, and the Kansas City, Kansas Public School District to really demonstrate the impact of fiber on the future of healthcare, sporting, and education. 
And in addition, we're honored to have also worked with a number of, of local retail locations here in Kansas City to demonstrate the impact of fiber, super fast connectivity on their businesses and their consumers. So, over the past year and a half, while we were building this product, we spent a lot of time talking to Kansas Cityans. And in those conversations, we've listened and we've learned a lot that has actually come back and shaped how we've designed Google Fiber for Kansas City. We did that because we want to make sure that our products are there to support you and your ambitions. I'd love to share some of the things that we found. Let's do this for everyone who calls Kansas City home. Let's do this for the Tiger Bites Robotics team. So our kids can build the next generation of technology. And let's do this for the Plaza Library. And give everyone in our community faster access to all the world's knowledge. And let's do this for the doctors at KU Medical. Let's do this to help keep Kansas City healthy and happy. So my family can connect with the best specialists in the world. Let's do this for our patients. And let's, let's do, do this, this for Wyandotte High School. So our students can take AP classes even if our schools don't offer them. And give our students a technological advantage. And let's do this for the Chiefs. Let's do this for our fans. Let's do this for the West Side. Let's do this for Waldo. It's Strawberry Hill. Roanoke. For Rosedale. Westport. 18th and Vine. Let's do this for Brookside. For Valentine. For River Market. Let's do this for Wendell Phillips. Let's do this for all our neighborhoods and help give them 100 times the possibilities. To inspire you. To make you laugh. To mentor our children. To bring life to the city. Let's do this for the arts. Let's do this for barbecue. Let's do this for the music. Let's do this for our future. Let's do this for everything you love. Let's do this for Kansas City, Kansas. Let's do this for Kansas City, Missouri. KCK. KC Mo. And let's do this for our public servants. So we can use the most advanced internet tools to protect you. So we can take care of each other better than any city before. Let's do this together. Let's, Let's do this for Kansas City. Let's do this for Kansas City. For Kansas City. For Kansas City. Let's do this for Kansas City. Let's do this for Kansas City. Indeed. So let's do this for Kansas City. I'd like to invite Mayor uh, James and Mayor Reardon, who are here to, with us today, to say a few words about what they are doing it for. Let's do this for Kansas City, Kansas. And let's do this for Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> We're thrilled to be a part of today's event, both of us together as one Kansas City, and to offer a unique opportunity to every one of our residents, the opportunity to make a choice and to participate. So let's do this together. It's an amazing opportunity that no other city has right now, and it's our opportunity to seize. Sly? You know, this whole thing started when everybody started working together to make sure that this happened. We achieved. All-Star Gang came, we worked together, we achieved. Now we're being asked to bring it into our fiber hoods by working together. W by working together, we can achieve anything. One thing I've learned is working with Joe Reardon, working with Kansas City, Kansas, and, and his government has brought us to a different level. We now have an opportunity to take a giant step, and if we don't do it, it's all on us. Sly, you know, we win big when we work together. And this is a day where we've won big because we work together. Now we get out in the neighborhoods and really get to work as well. Amen, brother.
Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor James. Very much. Thank you, Mayor James and Mayor Reardon. We're so grateful for how you welcomed us into your community. And we really want to be good neighbors to you. We couldn't be happier that we've picked here to start. You know, your communities are not just business friendly. They're broadband friendly, too. Together, we will make Kansas City a place where bandwidth flows like water, where the fastest internet in, in the world is available at an affordable price, and that people can get access to basic broadband for free. So there you have it. Now is the time to sign up at google.com slash fiber. Rally your friends and neighbors to get your neighborhood at the top of the list for installation. We're really excited about getting everyone connected and looking forward to writing the next chapter of the internet together, starting right here in Kansas City. Thank you. So feel free to relax in here a bit as we all move to small groups over uh, to the showcase floor, just across the driveway. Thank you.